Hi, welcome back to Soul System Success with myself, Rashid Ogunlaru. Hi, and I'm Julio Graham. Um, I'm a business consultant and a business coach. Excellent. Well, today you're in the spotlight, Julio, because you are the systems expert. Um, this is going to be quite a rich talk. Anyone listening to our first talk on Soul might thought that's a huge topic. System is a huge is a huge topic, isn't it? You think about the solar system. People might talk about the political system, the system they work in. The body is a system. Um, and many people get thrown by it. You get those people, you know, you hear terms like systems analysts and people who love technology. Yes, and it yes. seems lots of people feel as though on one level or another, they're being drawn more into the system or the system's taking over or we're reliant on things like this. Yes. Um, Julia, where do you want to begin our exploration today of this thing around system? Because we know it's key to success. Where, where, where are you going to kick us off? I think, Rashid, for, for me, the big thing is we need to separate um, what systems are. For people in their mind so it's, it's a very good example that you gave about the solar system we all understand that it's a system we don't fully understand how the system works but we understand that it's a system the same if you take the analogy of our bodies our bodies mm -hmm. our body is a viable entity mm -hmm. so viability is one of the words i use a lot and, mm -hmm. and when you talk about systems it is about viability so our body is a viable entity but our body con so it's one massive system mm -hmm. but actually it's a it's a group of interacting systems because you've got a nervous system, mm -hmm. you've got a respiratory system, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a digestive system. Mm -hmm. So all these different systems. So, so depending on where you're focusing, that's your system in focus. Right, right. right. That is so useful already. Shall I tell yeah. you what jumps to my mind tell then? Yeah. Is that then many people are watching this are interest it's the business aspect um, you know <laughs> it is it, business so straight away you, you drew me to think about an organization sure. so it might be that that somebody here is running their own business and maybe the various different bits of it the finance the operations and so on or that they're leading an organization or they're managing a team and so on there are people there are processes there's all of this kind of stuff uh, is that is it your experience that this that is where most people's experience of the system and where their challenges are uh, well around I, I think i think this is this is where the challenges are to change people's thinking about systems right because when we're talking about business the very first thing that people think about are it systems right so it systems are they're just a small part of it and, and yes they, it is a system and then often what happens is people people especially manufacturing people they understand processes very well, mm -hmm. and so they equate systems to pro their process. Now, it, the, the system, a system is larger than that collection of processes because when you go down the systems thinking route, there's a lot of things you can talk about. For example, um, human beings are involved in a system. Now, humans are involved in a process because they're actually doing the process, but a process mm -hmm. really is just a whole bunch of activities. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a system, you know, there, there are there are different people that do different things, mm -hmm. that have different emotions. So when you're trying to figure, so, so the reason we do systems thinking or, or the reason systems thinking is so good for um, helping businesses is when you're trying to solve problems or you're trying to create a system, it's always good to look at all the different things. Now systems thinking is very interesting. First yeah, of tell all, us, explain for those people who are curious about it. So it, I, I, am I right in getting the sense that, that Julia, that, that get, what you're saying is that given that there are all of these different systems, we started off by talking about the solar system, planets, stars, and so on, that you talked about the, the body, and within even the body there are the different systems. There's the respiratory system, etc., etc., etc. Uh, and then you said then the system thing, I'm getting the feeling from you that because these things are there, it's almost that they're, it's almost like they're almost like hardwired. They're, 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 some of these things are just there. They've been developed over, I don't know, however long period of time that there's, there's a, there's a, it's almost like there's a deeper knowledge. There is a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a scientific, there, there's, you know, there. Yes. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Can I, you explain I, a little bit about that? I, I can. I, I think with, with systems thinking, it, this systems thinking is just like any other philosophy if you like right. or, or theory I, I don't like really calling it a philosophy it's mm -hmm. not really philosophy but it's it's a way of being so so some people are very analytical mm -hmm. some people are numbers driven so, mm -hmm. so business is all about the numbers and and the numbers are definitely a part of it mm -hmm. but but they're different ways of, of of viewing the world now systems thinking is just another way of reviewing the world and the tools that are available from a systems thinking point of view are there to help people you know vision properly to help people make sure that their organization as a whole functions properly, etc., etc., and and so where you have to start off is you've got to start seeing systems in everything. Mm -hmm. So imagine you are a commuter who commutes to work in a car. Yes. The traffic to your office is a system. 
Now, you have a system of dealing with that system. So you get up in right. the morning, you know you've got to leave by a certain time, yes. and, and you, off you go. So now you're traveling along in your, in your system, and all the other people are joining it. And often you see the same blonde person mm. in the yeah, car yeah. next to you, because they also, their yes. timing is there. But then one day you arrive and there's a, you realize, hang on, we're not, we're four blocks away from where yes. we should be the time. So you think, well, I'll go this way. Yes. And so you go another way. So yes. you're doing something else. But the only reason you can go another way is because you understand the, the system that you're a part of. You know, okay, there's roadworks going on there, or there's a narrow bridge there, so I'm going to go this way, and I'll come out, and I might beat the people by three cars or whatever. Right. So you understand your system. Now, your business is a system just like that. Mm. The thing is, your business and what's going on in your business it's not about the hierarchy. It's not about the the the, the uh, sort of uh, what do you call it your organ organogram. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, so organogram sort of have the structure of who's in charge. Mm -hmm. But often when when you read management theories, you realize that actually there's the formal structure, then there's the informal network structure, and there are all these pardon me, there are all these things that um, that we've discovered over time. So one one thing that strikes me about that, and I love that analogy that you had that tech traffic. And I might think, OK, it's just me, my journey to work, I'm in my car and so on. But then I realise that there are other people who also have their own systems within a system. And then there's the traffic and how all the motorways and all that is, is a system. And then again, with business, isn't it? I might be running my business or I'm a manager within a business or I'm heading up a business. But then that business itself may well sit in within a number of other businesses and within the economy and how exactly. businesses yes. operate. So what I get a sense of from you, Julia, is that... that we need to be mindful. What you've said to us is that we need to be mindful that we are we are we are in systems. Yes. The, the, I guess the, the the challenge I guess comes when we forget that we're in systems. So we're trying to make things happen. So the classic ones that you and I both see is that I'm running a business. Let's say I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm running a small business, or I I am my business, and I'm trying to win more business, or I'm now needing to employ staff, or I'm you know trying to diversify into to this and that, and so therefore. I need to be systemized my thinking. I need to ask myself if the systems are in place or I'm uh, a scenario where you're called in a lot of the time, there's an organization that's looking to grow or you know it's trying to win more business. Can you, can you give us some of the main scenarios of where people then need to explore this system thinking that okay. you're talking about and to be aware of the system? Because some people, some people will be wired up that way yes. and many people just are unaware of it until they get into that car and there's a traffic jam and there's a problem or the, the boss, there's a problem with their boss or with the, uh, another business they can't win and that they, 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 they struggle because they, they're not thinking along those, those terms. Can you yes. give us some of those scenarios and pointers? So, so, so the, the most common thing that happens with, with business, especially the entrepreneur, um, there's a startup business, the guy gets going or the girl gets going and they're very enthusiastic and they do a lot of the things themselves and they, they contain a lot of things in their heads. Now if you take a systems thinking approach to these things, you should be making your tacit knowledge explicit, even though there's only you. The other problem with, with being one person is that you are not, you are the owner, mm -hmm. you are also the manager, mm -hmm. and you are also the doer. Mm -hmm. But you, when you're in doer mode, mm -hmm. you can't possibly be solving manager or owner problems. And when you're in the owner mode, you shouldn't be trying to solve operational problems. Mm -hmm. So when you start thinking systemically, Mm. You can start changing your focus. You understand what focus, what system you're focusing on. Where should we start then? So uh, let's take that example because many people listening to this, they may well be entrepreneurs and they think, yeah, I, Julia, you're absolutely right. I'm, the, I'm, do, I'm doing too much uh, and I'm also these other things. Yes. Presumably we should start in the owner mode. The owner should be the person who's more conscious of business more broadly. Where, would, where, where should we start off? Yes, okay. Now with systems, you can start anywhere. Okay. It doesn't matter. So what, what, will, what, what will be more comfortable, I mean, you're absolutely right, I would love it if an entrepreneur sat down and said, what's my vision? Mm. What, what am I trying to do? How am I trying to change the world? What are the kind of people? But that doesn't happen in reality. We know that. What happens is um, a lot of entrepreneurs are, are act, what I call accidental entrepreneurs. You know, they, they have to make a living. They've been kicked out of a system. They've been kicked out of an exactly. Or they've decided to leave the system. Because, because they, the system felt like a psychic prison right. or something right. like that to yes. them. I mean, to use metaphysics. Yes. Yes. Um, and so they find themselves, oh, they've just had a brilliant idea. And, they, and they're passionate about the idea. And strangely enough, that is at an operational level. Mm -hmm. so, so what happens is the operations. So, so start looking at your operations and they say, okay, now, in terms of these operations, what is the bigger system it's in? Mm. So management, well, there is no management because he doesn't have a management. Ownership, well, 
I have the ownership, but I'm the guy doing it. So start thinking, and then start saying, well, hang on a minute. I'm in an environment. So what kind of environment? Now, there's the natural environment, obviously, mm. but there's also your business environment. So mm. you are working in a particular sector. Mm. You've got stakeholders. Now, what's a stakeholder? This is this new word we've been hearing for mm. the last 20 years. It's still a new word for the last 20 years. Um, a stakeholder is someone who has an interest in your business, but is in actual fact doesn't care about your profits or your, sh your ownership or, your, or any of those things. They, they are a good example. Well, customer, a well, pub. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you a the, pub. Yeah. Yes, yes, a pub in a particular um, area. The cu it has customers mm -hmm. who may or may not come from that area, mm -hmm. but its neighbours mm -hmm. are stakeholders in that business. So if the pub is because noisy, if it's noisy, yeah, yeah, yeah if it's yeah. noisy or it has louts or or whatever it does, mm -hmm. it can affect its stakeholders, and you ignore your stakeholders at your peril because if you ignore them, and Greenpeace is a good example of a stakeholder that everybody keeps mm. in mind. The, the same with the pub; they need to think about who are they, um, who are the people that they are dealing with that are in the vicinity because if they don't right. then you'll have a successful pub which then gets its license revoked then so all we're doing is we're expanding so from a systems point of view right so the, all the pub is doing they've got the operations their stock tax etc they've got management who've got a certain um, ethos about the pub there normally is a, a brewery that owns the pub and they've got a certain ethos and, and a certain management thing and then there's the, the stakeholders so the people in the, in the neighborhood how, how do you deal with the people in the neighborhood? Do you say to them, look, we have karaoke on a Thursday, so mm. Thursdays, come and sing mm. with us rather than, than mm. phone the, the authorities, etc. So, so, so once you can start thinking like that and you can start seeing the relationships, because this is really about relationships. It's mm -hmm. systems. Take a motor car, mm -hmm. right? Um, Ferrari make a fairly good mm. car. Mm -hmm. Some people who don't like Ferrari would say Mercedes make a better car. Mm -hmm. However, if we took the best gearbox from a particular car, and the best set of wheels and the best body and the best everything and we put that together and made one car we'd have the worst car in the world mm. because those systems aren't designed to work with each other right so there's so many rich things that you're saying here uh, uh, um, julian and i want to um reflect on them i think that there is uh, um, this is very 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 powerfully rich and i guess that one of the things that strikes me about this conversation already is this thing that um, we will all have our own systems and we get up and we do our own daily routines and around our homes, our friendships, socially and all the rest of it. And then there might be other routines. We go to work or we run our own business and so on. But often we forget about then the broader aspects of it. I love that, you're, again, your traffic scenario was powerful or the person who's setting up a, 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 a cafe and they may or may not be aware of all these other factors. So can you give us, um, you, you've given us, I guess, a couple of pointers for the entrepreneur to be mindful of, isn't it? That where, especially if they um, wear all these different hats to start to step out and then be thinking about their environment or the different stakeholders, et cetera, et cetera. For those people who are in organizations now, let's take the, because um, I guess that our other audience, we've got the entrepreneur audience, yes. but we've also got the people who are managers within organizations, people work within within organizations. Now, lots of people in the organizational concept, lots of this where people often, that they often feel stressed, their manager, their boss, or they're asked to do this, this, or that. that. Yes. Whether somebody is leading an organization, whether they're a manager in an organization, or whether they are a staff member in an organization, could you give us some of the fundamentals, because you've being called into many yes. organizations over the years as a management consultant. What are some of the key themes in terms of system that people, anybody, anywhere in them need to be mindful about? Okay, so, so once again, to reiterate the point we made at the beginning is that the systems within an organization are not just the IT systems and the processes. So first of all, though, those are part of them, but it's just a small part. Those are some activities that people get up to. So, so people need to understand that. Um, if you think about a leader, if you're leading an organization and you find that you, you, you sort of going one way and the organization is going the other way because they don't want, sort of want to follow you. Mm. For want, I mean, you know, we know that. Yeah, I can't get my, I'm thinking I'm a leader in it. Well, now, why are these staff, these staff are causing a, a problem there? You know, they're not, they, they don't get it. Exactly. So yeah. now, now if you understand what's going on with those staff and you understand the system they're in, so, so it then gets, it then starts getting quite um, fuzzy for want of a better word. And this is where the soul bit really comes mm -hmm. into. If you understand their attitude, what the problem is they're having, what's causing them to do things. Because remember, systems are always in balance. Mm. They try, the, the natural state of a system is to try and be in balance. Right. So when you've got a status quo right. and you're trying to change it, yeah. it'll fight you. 
Right. Because that's what systems do. They don't want to be unbalanced. You, you've highlighted something I think is very powerful for this conversation. And maybe it's, I, I want to bring it to our attention because we want to just to give people a real flavor of some of these themes in these very short talks. But as you've been speaking, a number of things um, jumped uh, uh, to my mind. And I think if we, if, if uh, at the time of, of, of filming this, there's a number of issues that are going on worldwide. Here in the UK, um, both the main party, political parties have been in a lot of change. The Labour Party, for example, and it's been interesting, there's been a leader of the Labour Party who's got a huge following in their country and membership, but they're having problems with their, with their parliamentary system. Yes. In America, there's all sorts of issues in terms of the system and whether the old political parties, you know, whether they, the, the people understand the, the public, there's all sorts of other systems yeah. um, there. That we're, we're filming this during the time of the Olympics, the systems, yeah. and then with the governing Turkey. system and so on, Turkey. So so what, what I get a sense of from what you're talking about is that I, I love where you gave the example that even within the body, there are all these differing systems. Now, the body is an example of where this usually, usually works incredibly well. The, 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 the respiratory system, all the other systems that they find that balance. But when it comes to organizations and businesses, this is where there's often a lot of imbalance. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, because you see this stuff, you've worked in large organizations, you've worked in smaller businesses yes. and charities. Where, where are the where are the sticking points, um, Julie? Because there's some, it strikes me that sometimes between staff, people, whether the IT systems work, whether there's this or whether, the, you know, um, yes. uh, whether we're customer friendly enough. Can you just give us some of these key touch points? That so, so, what, so one of the things that, that happens is that um, you have a leader who, who doesn't see all of the bits and pieces. So, so or it, doesn't, it doesn't even have to be the leader. It could be any of the, the people. So someone who's very internally focused. Mm -hmm. What is what I mean by internally focused? They're looking at what's going on inside the organization. Mm -hmm. So they, they're making sure that the manufacturing is perfect. They're making sure the products they produce are perfect. The services are perfect. The service lines are perfect. They're trying to all of that. But they're not listening to the customers. Right. So I've been in organizations where I've said, look, we're going to change the way the statement on the, on a, on the accounts go out. Um, is everyone happy? Yes. What do the customers think? Oh, we dare not ask the customers mm. because they're going to think something's going on here. Mm. Well, why not ask the customers? Maybe there's a reason, a valid reason, but, you know, be aware of there are other things. So, so you were talking about um, the body. Now, the body's got systems that coordinate systems. Mm. You know, so the nervous system is our coordination. Mm. You, you, you bump your hand or you prick your finger, it hurts. Your, your, the nerves tell the brain, listen, it's hurting there, move the muscles. Mm. You know, so that, so, so if, you, if you view that, there's a, there's a, a wonderful bit of, of systems thinking, sort of some theory that was done around cybernetics, they mm -hmm. call it. Now, I don't want to get too hung mm -hmm. up on the things, but mm -hmm. there was a, a man by the name of Stafford Beer, and he came up with a thing called the viable systems mm -hmm. model. And it's based on the human, the systems in the mm -hmm. human body. And he's got five systems or six systems in there, and they each have a different function. Mm -hmm. Now, if you understand a little model like that, mm -hmm. and you then view, I always, I think I may have um, said this to you before, I often say to people, just take this model. So let's take Stafford Beer's Vital mm -hmm. Systems model. Imagine that it's a pair of glasses. Put it on and look at your organization. And if there's something you can see that you didn't see before, that's a useful mm -hmm. model for you. If you look at it and you go, nah, it makes no sense or whatever. I like then that don't, a lot. Then don't use it. I like that a lot. The thing that jumped into my mind was I started thinking about the, was it the ecosystem because it'll be this thing between the plants, people, this, this, the other. T tell me a little bit about what's the what the glasses that you put on when you're called in to work with a large organization or a smaller organization. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, are there a few different threads that you're looking for? Um, uh, staff, key stakeholders, their internal systems of process. What, 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 the, what are the key things that you're, you're looking at when you put those glasses on when you walk in through a door of an organization? All right, so, so the first thing is it depends on where I walk into the organization. Yes. So if I get called in at an operational level, um, the, the first thing I do is I just I, I have a look and see what the problem is, mm -hmm. if there is a problem or what the situation is, and then I and then I, I look at the situation and see is this a situation that we want to that we need to address or mm -hmm. solve, because often what happens is we solve the wrong problems, um, and so if if it is the if it's the right problem then you, we broaden our horizons. So you always broaden your horizons to try and, and understand as much of what is going on around you. Now, obviously you can get caught up, so you've got to broaden it. To the point that it's practical. Mm. So, so let's take an example: um, a large manufacturing concern. Let's say they make I don't know soap. Mm. They've got 400 plants around the world. 
etc etc one plant in one place they're losing the stock numbers don't mm -hmm. look right so it's an accounting problem so they call us in and they say look we've got this accounting problem we can't balance the stock but we all know that the accounts is you know it's it's what's happened so we know that the problem actually mm. isn't in accounts accounts is just reflecting mm. the problem but i mean what we could do is we could spend a lot of time trying to fix the accounts mm -hmm. rather than going say well how how why are the accounts out let's go and find out if stock's going missing or if the manufacturing process mm -hmm. is flawed etc mm -hmm. and so we we broaden our problems and what we may I mean I we have I have had these sort of situations where one of the problems were just that there were warehouses full of soap that were just not moving right. because no one had recorded them so, so there they sit right but but and so we have got a stock loss there but actually the stock hasn't been lost no one's recorded it. Uh, there it sits. so there can be so, uh, many different places where that can be exactly for the person who sat here and they're watching maybe they're an entrepreneur maybe they're a manager what have you and they're realizing that there are the issues, the challenges that I have just before we uh, close. Um, what are some of the things that they should be looking at? I, w w the one of the things I get from this conversation, which has been incredibly rich, by the way, is that first of all, I've got to be able to step back. Uh, if I'm, for example, an entrepreneur, okay, what's going on in my broader environment? What's going on for my customers? What's going on for me, etc. So it's a bit of just doing this scan of the different layers of the of one's environment, of of of, of stakeholders, and so on. Is that is that broadly that, that for somebody who's not a, a systems thinker or yes. a, te a technician, yes. an expert like yourself, what what are some of the things that that, that somebody uh, um, should do if they they sense that there is a problem? I, I think the the best thing to do is to understand, know that your problem. Is being caused by a system, or at least view it that way. That your problem is being caused by a system. So, if your if your if your problem is the outcome of a whole system, don't try and address the symptoms. You know, if 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 someone so got, give us an example. Well, I'm not that you've got pain, example. Yeah. pain in your knee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So pain in your knee might be because of something wrong with your foot or something wrong with your back. Right. right? So, so taking tablets for the pain in your knee does not solve the pain right. problem. In the same way that, for example, I might be thinking, oh, well, there aren't enough customers coming in. Yes. Well, that, that, then there might be a number of things. Am I marketing right? Is there changes is going on in the product, economy? Is the product, is product right? right? Exactly. Right. So, so, so always expand the, the scope of your problem. Right. And I think just be open. You're going to find very, very many different systems models out there. Right, that, right. And, and just be open to other models. Um, be mindful of the people around you. Right. Inquire. Right. Just inquire. Be inquisitive. And that's so powerful because I can also see, you know, we touched on it a little bit briefly there from an entrepreneur perspective. But again, for a leader, imagine they're just seeing that the problem is this member of staff or whatever. Well, hang on. If by stepping back, it, it, it takes that problem around from that person being difficult. Are there other things, are the conditions right, are there other themes, things that could be useful for me to stop and to look at? That is, that is exactly it. And, and once we start looking at, at outcomes as mm -hmm. opposed to outputs, then we move into what our next session is going to be about a success. Success. Really, is how do you measure success, not by the outputs, right. but by the outcomes. And then that's a lovely roundup for this conversation, Julia, because I guess that it means that therefore with this thing about with the system, the system is really there to support people isn't it, 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 it that there'll be an ecosystem like you know the an organizational system it's about people it's about utilizing that so so when it's working really effectively that's what it does so we shouldn't get too hung up or afraid of of system per se it's about understanding it and utilizing um system thinking to to to, to help us get more insight that's going to help us be more successful precisely i think systems thinking when things go right you understand what is making it go right and when things go wrong You've got places where you can intervene that aren't always obvious. Mm, that's, and and that's, yeah. that's, that's really what, what it's all about. Wow, thank you so much for your time and thanks very much thank for this very rich conversation. I've certainly learned a lot. Good, excellent. Well, we'll see you in our next conversation, which is all about success, where we'll try and bring together the soul and the system things and then talk about just success generally. Thank you. Goodbye.